All right, what's up? Welcome to World Thrift Live. Uh, this is a later segment. It is 9 p.m. Uh, tonight we're going to go live with Steve, coming all the way from L.A., so it's about 6 p.m. over there. He just joined. Uh, Steve, just hit the request, and then we'll kind of have you jump in. Anyone, as you're watching, of course, as always, just go ahead and drop any viewer questions below, and we'll try to get to them. Uh, again, we kind of just refined our segment, so it's going to be about uh, 20 minutes, but this allows us uh, to kind of... You see, like today, we've done two interviews, so we're going to try to start doing interviews more often. But uh, yeah, Steve just hopped in, so we're going to wait and get this started. <coughs> Steve, what's up, man? What's up, bud? Can you hear us? What's, what's up, up, guys? Hey, man, how are you? Can you hear us? I can't hear anyone. Can you hear us? Audio. Can you guys hear? We can hear you. Can you guys hear us? Yeah, we're all the way loud. Volume's all the way up. Can you guys hear us? There we go. I can hear you. You can hear us? Okay. I can hear you. I got to keep the speaker pretty close. Okay, cool. Yeah, sometimes it just ta it just takes a minute sometimes for like the connection and the sound and everything to lock in. Um, but yeah, real quick, if you guys don't mind, just uh, introduce yourself and then uh, kind of just run us through the story, dude. We love we would love that. Well, what's up, guys? My name is Steve John Bahan. Um, the person holding the phone is Sahar. Hey guys. He's the co-owner of the store we run here on Melrose Seven Eight One Nine Melrose. This is the store. Let's get a view, maybe. It's called Pop Up LA. That's why it's called Pop Up LA because in Los Angeles, uh, myself um, and a bunch of friends would do pop ups um, religiously for the past five years, every weekend, rain or shine, um, at the Rose Bowl at the Miller's Trading Post prominently. And. Uh, I feel we had a big influence with the with the clothing, and then it spread it into um, it spread it into music and art. And a lot of West Coast, and then from there it it became uh, an idea that uh, that we coined as the new Cali way. Right, right, yeah. So that's what we're doing. The store. Let's take you inside the store, guys. Let's do it. Check it out. Let me turn down the volume so I can hear you guys. But this is the store. So cool, yeah. Yeah, when we're in LA next, we're definitely going. Yes. That's so cool. We take off the side. So right now we're making some custom clothing. We have a live event tomorrow with a, um, a hip-hop group. And so we're making custom clothing for that one event. It's like a one-of-one -one drop. So we start off with white plastisol, and then we layer that with, like, a color, so it has, like, a 3D image. That's okay. what we're doing now. So that's that. It's, we kind of changed the station around throughout the place. It's kind of open. But this is the store. We got a lot of the clothes hanging on poles and just hanging on the walls for people to see and touch and feel. Yeah, that's one thing I love about the setup you guys have is how a lot of the shirts, yeah, are kind of just hanging from the I, ceiling and I stuff like that. Ceiling. It's great. The yeah. ceiling is just beautiful. Wow. Yeah, you get to trip out on it, kind of look at all the details. What are, what are some favorite, what are your favorite pieces? Okay, is that you guys want to go into some of that? Like, want to trip out on some of the famous pieces or the cool pieces we have? Yeah, yeah. if you could show us some of your great pieces, that would be awesome. First, let's walk around the store. Let's show the dimensions and let's check it out. So this is like the entrance. We're walking in. Check this out. We got shirts, jackets. We got instruments sitting around. Here we go. That's so cool. <laughs> what we do here? Jam it out. So this is our pop wall right here. Yeah. Where we just with everyone. Pop stands for power of people. Oh, okay. That's cool. People, like we're, our collective and what we stand for is people-based. Um, it's not bank financed. If we have to deal with banks, it's really tough on our end. We don't want to do that. We want everyone to know that our store is not bank financed. It's all financed. 
Sinef by Sahar and I and our friends. That's awesome. Um, every here comes from our hard work. And hard work is the solution, not borrowing or sitting around looking for answers. We create the answers here. You come through. This is an original house. So the right. original house stands first with us developing it from within and not allowing other people to develop it. So this is OG. Yes. Come on, guys. Let's look around. So this is the back end right here. We got the lovely Gibson on the wall. So we have and we're left and right. So anyone can come in and play with us, depending on what style you play. Do you That's have the right women's inside the uh, the store? I'm sorry. Men's and women's. Do you have both men's and women's? We do. Good question. We're gonna get to that right now. Let's get over here. We'll start with that actually, because it's right in the front. Oh, cool. So we also carry children's clothing. So oh. Sahar, she has a, a son, and with that. She's been inspired to make and create um, and, or curate a vintage uh, line of kids' clothing. So we have that right at the entrance. That's so people can get influenced with that. And let's check out some of them. We have a lot of vintage stuff that people like, and it's also Sahar's taste. She feels that it's something the kids would pick. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I love the way. Check it out. Got to go get some, uh, oh, baby, baby Bird has some good stuff. Sonny, you've got to, yeah, oh my Something God. Something match the band. Yeah. Something match yeah. the bands. That's the shirts, man. We have custom jackets that she designs. Say. This one's uh, an artist that we work with locally. He's called H3. Shout out to H3. He's a great artist. He's a hip hop artist and designer. Very cool. So, yeah, that's like the kids' custom stuff. It changes daily. And then over here, we got a, a, like a custom rack for, for men and women, but it's mostly for women, their crop. Oh, that's big. Some of, you know, some of them are customized. So cool. We a few people. So Hart customizes them. And a, 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 right now, we're working with a, another lady by the name of Annette. Urban Vintage. Urban Vintage. She, she hangs out at the pop-up, um, the heat machine pop-up. She's part of our crew, so... We like to mess with her work and support her work. Some of that stuff. All right, so we have a customer, guys. Someone walked in, so you get to see what it's like in the pop-up. Yeah, dude. How it is. So let's check it out. So let's face it over here. So these are just like custom crops. Down here, some sweaters. And we can also add to the to the um, to the sweaters or shirts or it's all customizable. We can add more material or we can add patches or distress how, them. How did you, how did you guys get into all of this? Like, tell us your your background. Well, we have a we have two different backgrounds. So Sahar will tell her background. Um, you want to you want to do yours real quick? Here, we'll start with her. Ladies first. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Sahar. Uh, w would you mind just, uh, yeah, just um, introducing yourself real quick and then give us the rundown? Okay. How's it going? Nice to meet you. Um, I'm Sahar. My Instagram is Dapper Dawn. I do uh, custom clothing. I met Steve at a swap meet two years ago, and um, he walked up to me one day. He's like, why are you doing custom clothing? And I was like, well, you know, I'm making a living for my son. And um, he's like, you got to do vintage. And I was like, well, what's in it? He's like, you got to check out the binge. And okay. I was like, whoa. Like, what's the binge? I was like, man, he wouldn't tell me. He would not tell me, but he gave me that little hint. And I went online and I just started searching. And my first day, I went to Goodwill and uh, I scored like four Nirvana tees. Yeah. Oh. Some, some kid, uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. Thrift Lord, Karen, um, was yeah. very upset. Very upset. Um, he wanted to pay me. He wanted to pay me fifty dollars for like three of them, and I said no way. I went online. I saw each of them for like three fifty. I made over a grand on them on eBay. That's insane. And I was like, no, I got to buy my son dinosaurs, and I just I'm not going to take that quick money. So I started digging, digging, and two years later, um, well, a year later, me and Steve opened up a business, and we didn't do anything with it until um, another year went by, and I found this store and. 
I felt like Steve was the right person because he had given me all the knowledge on where I was today. Yeah. So I, yeah, we hung out. We're friends. Um, we started the, the market across the street together. We both stopped selling at Melrose Trading Post. I got kicked out of Melrose Trading Post, and I started selling. For what? Yeah, why did they kick you out? Um, there was an accusation that I was uh, smoking marijuana and selling marijuana in my booth and just crazy accusations. Crazy. Um, yeah, crazy. No proof at all. I did not have any weed in my booth at that moment. They even send people to search. But anyways, um, I, still, um, I still had to make money, so I set up on the streets, and I had like seven clothing racks on the streets every morning, like Sunday, 6 a.m., and um, I would hold it down for Steve. Steve would hold it down for me. Uh, we had each other's back, so I really felt like he was the proper person to open up a store with. Yeah. You're moving the camp. Uh, yeah, so I feel like he's the proper person to uh, open up a store with. And, yeah, I do custom, so this is kind of what I do. I, I brought in um, just kind of my designs. I'll grab, like, the Army inliners, um, Marlboro pants, and then I'll add Steve's inspiration as well. So I will add a little fist pocket. Lower it, Steve. <laughs> Lower it. This is Steve's inspiration okay. behind my Okay, so that's Steve. Um, and, yeah, I just do customs. Wow, that's sick, yeah. Oops. Oops. Random things. Look at these. These are pretty dope. Yeah, just wild. Those shorts are cool. Yeah, these are just handmade from some fabric that I found at the, at the Goodwill outlet. We found a big roll of it. And yeah. so, you know, it's that new Cali wave. You put them on, jump on a boogie board or something, and have a good life. Steve, but, you reversed the camera. Oh, I did? Yeah. <laughs> we look alike. Awesome. Cool. So that's awesome. So that's a uh, – I appreciate you uh, sharing your story with us, so hard. It sounds like you guys really have, like, a really cool thing going on out there. Um, yeah, we do. Steve, do you want to kind of just give us your rundown real quick then, too? a very long one but yeah. i'd say like six years ago um i was i was losing a lot of gigs playing concerts and gigs i was working with a singer by the name of andy and he was the most prominent one and he's a very big persian singer a middle eastern singer and i was making okay money with him and i was also playing a very good gig at the um it's a Concord Theater. It's in Burbank. It's right near the old Ikea. And I was doing that every Sunday. And I, I had a few gigs. I had my own band going. And I started to lose gigs. And it was due to drug use. I was involved in some drugs. Um, and it was tough. I was going through tough times. And so that's where I started. I was, on, I was using drugs. And the drugs um, led me to a, a dark place. And I lost a lot of gigs. I lost a lot of work. And um, I, I lost myself. So at the very bottom and low of existence, of, of being a person, I uh, decided to change. I didn't want to um, leave a legacy, like all my hard work. I have a daughter, and I have a lot of things that I had built up through my life, and I didn't want to let that down. I didn't want to um, leave a mark on them forever or the things that I, I cherish and hold close. So um, I decided to change my life. I stopped using drugs, and um, I wanted to do something – that um, took me away from drugs. I'm like, what can I do from like morning to night? Because when I play gigs, I get free time and I want to party. And if I go get a day job doing like some corporate job, which I really never did, um, I know when I, when I leave the job, I'm going to want to get high or something. So what can I do? Right. So um, I got inspired to go like pick fruit and like sell fruits. And so I went to Ventura County and I started like trying to buy fruits and and deal with, like, wholesale fruits. And from there, some Hispanic people told me to do a swap meet. They're like, go to swap meets and, like, sell things. And so just to break it down, that's what happened. I started doing swap meets. My very first one was in Saugus, California. And I, I was selling toys, a few clothing, and just various things. And I did great that day. Yeah. And so I said, I'll do it again. So I, I did that for a while. And one day, this man by the name of David Arlington, he's a big-time, like, vintage collector, and he sells to a lot of stores in L.A., um, like, round two, now round two, but in the day, back in the day, it was, like, Wasteland, Crossroads, right. and other ones I'm not familiar with. 
but his name's David Arlington. That is his name. And he came to me one day at the swap meet about five years ago, and he saw that I had vintage rock shirts and music shirts. And he told me, hey, you know what? I can sell these for you, Steve, and I don't want to, um, I don't want to burn you. I know these are good, and I'm willing to help you. I said, okay, well, how much do you want to pay me? And so he tells me, I can do 25 a shirt. I'm like, wow, that's really good. And at the time I had, I remember, a 1981 Who. I had like a 79 Kiss. I had a few Rush shirts that were mine. And I sold half of them to him. And I, and I probably did like 400 bucks with him. And I was amazed because I'm like, wow, people like old rock shirts yeah. or music shirts? And he was like, yeah, man. And he's like, if you can get me more, I'll come back next week. And so I said, let's do it. So that happened. That went on for a good couple of years. And that's how I found um, the bin, the Goodwill bin because I had a desire and need to find clothing, and he was the reason. He was the right. first reason. So I discovered the bins. Um, that's a whole different story, but when I found the bins, um, I found them on my own, and there was someone there that told me to stay there. And I ended up staying there from, like, 8 in the morning till 7 at night, and I was the only one at the time, at least in this new culture. This was, like, four, about four years ago in Panorama City, and this location is off Lanark and Van Nuys. It's called the um, Panorama location, the Goodwill Outlet. And so I was there morning to night, and um, there was no one else really there at the beginning. And I was getting daily maybe five to a hundred vintage shirts, and a lot of them were really rare shirts. Right. So I was, still there. yeah. So it got to a point where other people came in, and one of them was Danny decal at decal on instagram and he's my partner with the heat machine he came in and he had a big fawn for like streetwear supreme polo tommy and i grew up around that but i wasn't too into it because i grew up in a rock and roll like, yeah. building bonds rock shirts and playing guitar so i didn't really have a vibe for that too much but i knew about it so he came in and started teaching me about that and i taught him about like music shirts and art shirts and kind of like a cool culture right and so to get we formed the heat machine, and it started there at that Goodwill. That's awesome. So as, as people started coming in, uh, it got real hard. Competition got hard, and here we are. Right. Nice. Now it's like packed. Yeah, for sure. I've, I've definitely, I mean, we've, we've noticed it for sure. When we started, I kind of just started uh, our brand when I was uh, probably in, like, my last uh, two years of college, just finishing up. And he he's my best friend, so I brought him in one when I graduated and we started this, but you were probably one of the first pages I found. And I remember when we first started selling stuff, yeah. I hit you up yeah. about a Led Zeppelin tee. And I was like, how much for this t-shirt? And I showed him, I was like, dude, look how sick this shirt is. It was fucking sick. And I'm, I'm like peeking in your page. I'm like, dude, this guy's on the West coast. I'm like, he's out there with round two and them. He's like, he's got really dope stuff. I was like, but like, I was like, I can actually talk to him. I was like, I'll message him and he'll reply. And so you hit me back and you're like, you're like, uh, I think you were like, normally it's 200. You were like, but for you, my friend, it's 160. And I'll even offer to buy it back for you from you later for a hundred bucks. <laughs> and literally I show him, I'm like, I'm going nuts. I'm like, dude, look at this. I'm like, this is because I, I was trying to explain to him because where we are in Florida, it's, it's so different. Like people think 40, 50, $60 is crazy for a shirt. So we've almost had to kind of build that mindset out here that you can charge a little. There are shirts that are worth that. And so when I first saw that, I like show him, I'm like, look, dude, like it's possible. And, and I just thought <laughs> still to this day, it was the, one of the craziest and coolest negotiations ever. The fact that you like were like, OK, this is the price and I'll even buy it back. I was like, dude, essentially, this guy's telling me I can rent the shirt for sixty dollars. So, right. And you got this way, like a Grateful Dead tee, that's like the Grateful Dead band, they, they set that like one of the examples of cool t-shirts. Like right. back in the maybe 60s, early 70s when shirts were being made, they made possibly the coolest shirts on the planet. Right. You know? And so now to this day, t-shirts have changed. The ideal of a t-shirt could be like a hoodie with holes in it with cut sleeves and like that's what people wear as a t-shirt. But back then the t-shirt was a shirt with a cool image on it. That doesn't really exist no more. So a, a real Grateful Dead shirt is kind of priceless because in this time it's not. But let's say 50 years from now, it's going to be priceless because there was a time when people wore the shirt. And, again, they built a bong. They worked on their GTO. And 
it was like meant to be. So now if you're wearing a shirt like that, it's not really part of that, that time of when it was really relevant. Right. right. I feel like, like rock and roll and the t-shirts that were made during that time represent the t-shirt spirit. Because prior yeah. to that, you had the military making shirts, I guess, you know, like in the forties and fifties, that's who like managed t-shirts or. Right. Yeah. I think one of the, one of the best things I, I think what I really like is I, I personally am really into the band tees as well. And like the whole rock and roll culture. And one of the best posts I think you've ever said was, I think you just posted, it was a photo. It was a t-shirt of maybe it, it was Prince or someone on it. But uh, the caption, it was just, uh, there's nothing better in this world to me than t-shirts with a badass individual on them. And to me, I was like, that's just so, like so much truth. I feel like it's just so cool. Cause that's it is. T-shirts is, I feel like people can just appreciate them just like how for what you're saying is there's just, they're just so cool. You know, you just really can't, there's nothing about, there's nothing more to it. It's just like the t-shirt. Okay, like, I want to cry because they're so cool. Yeah. Like Prince, dude, he can walk through the door and just like, like sing for you, dance for you, hey, cook guys, for you. Open. It's like, he'll outplay you, out bitch slap you, out perform you, out dance you, out swim you. He was just an awesome human. So it's like his shirts are just completely awesome. He's no longer here. So if you have a poster or, or anything you can touch, like a movie you got to watch, but if you have a poster, you can look at it, you can touch it. You know, that's kind of cool too. But a shirt you get to wear, right. like you got prints on your body. So it's something like that's just so cool. And even better, like Frank Zappa, like people, I don't know if anyone knows who that is to find a, a Frank Zappa shirt or anything that you can like wear or expose the idea behind Zappa or his image is completely awesome. Right. So right. a t-shirt with Zappa's face on it is all I ever need. It's like, that's like, put me in the middle of New York and put a Frank Zappa shirt on me. And it's like, to me, that's like influencing the people. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's where it's at. Shirts are just super dope. They, they get. To so, um, so I would definitely say, um, Oh, shit. So I would definitely. So say, I've got one. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I mean, before we end this or anything, I wanted to um, express one of my big finds. Like, I did a Madonna find yeah. on Madonna's birthday two years ago. Yeah. I think her birthday is August 14th. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it. It is. And on that day, at the Goodwill in Panorama City, at 9:30 in the morning, usually everyone's there by like 8:30, but I show up like all the diggers that are after like that major heat. So I show up and I'm there like, I think like nine and I had left the gym, which is down the block, 24 hour fitness. Thank you. 1980 something. He got me into that. Nice. So anyways, I'm the gym. I leave the gym and I show up there no one's there. And, uh, I see bins coming out. I walk up to it and the first two are out and then the next two come and there's about six that have to come out before we can dig. So I'm like standing there and I see the, um, the fourth bin has, has just a whole bin full of Madonna shirts and they're all old ones. Here, here's an example. I still have quite a few of them, but I was looking at this. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, I was looking at this. I'm just looking at now. Now I know 87 of them. I counted. So, when, when the last bins come out, I'm like looking at the door praying. I hope no diggers come in here. I hope no one comes in here. If they do, I'm just grabbing everything. I don't care if they kick me out. Like, I'm just sweating. So all the bins come out, and I'm ready to dig, and there's no diggers. There's just some Hispanic people and some locals, and they're not really knowing what's going on. So I start going crazy grabbing them, and I can't handle it. And this Hispanic lady that digs for some of the, um, the vintage guys runs up because she sees me going crazy. And she grabs one at like, literally like out of my stack. And so she got one, but I got all of them, dude. It was 87 of them. I'm, I pay for them. I think it was a sell, 50 cents each. Right. So I'm folding them. I'm folding them up. And the first digger to walk through the door, uh, believe it or not, was my older brother, Fred. And I'm like laughing at him. And then after that, a few other diggers. I'm not sure who, but like pretty much everyone from L.A. showed up. Right. And I Stacked there, and yeah, it was 87 Madonna shirts, and I think it was valued like to me, I valued it at over ten thousand dollars. Right, right, that's insane. 
See, that's crazy. One, I didn't know you found them in the bins. I thought you, I thought you bought them off of someone. That's even crazier. No, I pulled them out of the bin, and the manager too. There, um, his nickname's Goathead. I love him, but um, what's his real name? I call him Goathead. You know, he's into heavy metal and shit. So, anyways, uh, Goathead comes up to me and is like, "Look, we're never doing that again." Because I'm like walking out with him, like laughing and just happy. And he's like, look, that was supposed to go in auction. We were supposed to separate them. I don't know who threw all those in the bin. And he's like, if you want, you can return them back to us and things will be cool. And I'm like, what do you mean? So I just, I paid, I had already paid for them. And I'm like walking out. So I walked out with them. And I'd say after that, it was trouble finding um, Big Bolt. Still to this day, like, I think the most someone has pulled at one time is maybe 10. Right. There was times also where I, a few big, Full orders of Grateful Dead shirts. I think I got a total of 300 of them. Oh, That's crazy. Shit. A pack of 200 of them came out, and the manager warned me. He's like, look, there's these tie-dye shirts that you're into, and I'm going to bring them out at the very last bin. And I was just sweating, waiting for it. And I knew it. So when it came out, I tackled the bin before it even came out, and so everyone tackled it with me. There was, there was some guys from Varsity, I believe, or like that store Varsity, I believe. Yeah. Uh, there was a few there, and I got a lot of them. Awesome. Check it out, guys. We're going to close some prices here. We got some customers here. We're going to quote some prices with Steve. Yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, let's do this. So, okay, we're, who, who wants the price? Start it a little bit more. Our, our screen is not seen. There we yeah, go. Perfect. Bring it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Yeah. So bring the 40 shirt. Because I have come and <laughs> Okay, right we're going to do 15 on that one. Okay. Boom. We're on a live feed, so we're going to hook you guys up. Yay, yeah, Rick and Morty. Dollars. Oh, we're on a live feed. It is. It is. Wow, and this is that. a big vintage. So, if, yeah, if you want Talk to. About. Just so, what's up? Yeah. We're going to do this one's 15. I'm going to do 10 on that one. Oh, my God. And I already have that one price. Perfect. Here, bring it down a little bit. Remember, we're split screen, so we, we lose a little bit of camera angle. Perfect. Let's do it. We're Canadian, so far for the English. Yeah. You guys are Canadian. <laughs> English is wow. Right. We are. From Montreal. Is this your first day out here? First uh, week for me. Yeah. First week. Well, thank you for coming to the pop up. <laughs> so sick. It is the pop up. I love it. This is a uh, live in action. This is live, guys. This Remember, happen. live. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. <laughs> so. So. Um. So real quick, so so out of out of your little collective group that you guys have, you're kind of like you said, you're mostly into like the rock and roll culture. And then you said uh, one of your business partners, he's into more of the streetwear. Um, and then of course you said Sahar, she's kind of like the customizer. So together you guys have uh, like a pretty good uh, like eclectic um, collection of stuff at the pop up shop, correct? We do, and it's, in a sense, consider the things that we outsource as a front to get us to that level within our space to where we can be respected for our own contributions. Right, right. And you guys like, have great, great prices. Like you were just selling those girls, you have 10 and $15 T-shirts, and you've got the super good grails, like some of the Madonna tees you were showing us as well, and stuff even better than that, I'm sure. 100 percent we want to we want to serve everyone i think with hard work and, and the industry we're in we're capable of offering um like a five dollar shirt to a five thousand dollar shirt right. or a price with right I based, think, based on work yeah i think that's i think that's really important too that's one thing we try to strive for um is being able to serve the community and and anyone in it you know uh, one, one thing we like to say is that, you know, we have a little something for everyone in our collection, kind of like what you're saying, you know, a, a wide range of prices and a wide, wide range of different uh, items, you know, band tees, 
don't want to turn anyone away. We don't want to turn anyone away. And I feel bad when someone comes in here and they're, especially a tourist or someone from out of town, like, I want to literally levitate for them. I can't levitate, so uh, I offer the clothing, and then I offer a service with the clothing where they can, like, charge their phone, use the restroom. Like, they, they, we have a dressing room. Um, we, they can rent the clothing while they're in town for a day or two. They don't have to buy it. Um, we offer bundle deals. I will see music with people. We do, like I said, we have instruments here. We have flutes. We have uh, both left and right-handed guitars. We have pianos. We have a beat machine. Check this out, guys. This is for everyone right here. Dope. Oh, yeah, I've seen you guys use that, actually. Yeah. See, they can't hear, you can't hear them. Oh. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of designed, uh, or I'd say the, the facility is designed for, for uh, prudent people to be creative. That's awesome. And, you know, I, myself, um, like me personally, I want to develop my brand into a, a universal brand that deals with music, art, fashion, and, but mostly music. Uh, I want to develop a label that, that manages and produces um, artists of all kinds um, right here in this location. And it's going to start with doing concerts and talk about like meet and greets. That's awesome. And from there we lead to tours and mix the artists along with the fashion idea and the, the, um, that, that independent art grassroots culture. So if I'm in Texas or if I'm in uh, New Mexico, wherever I'm at, I can take an artist a musician, and then also like a designer, I can take a visual artist, a photographer, create a festival and employ a bunch of people and create this environment that's fun for everyone. Right. That's the goal. Yeah, absolutely. So, that's awesome, man. It's good to hear that for sure. It sounds like you've got like a good, uh, a good, uh, a good layout of what you want to do. And all the goals, they, they sound really uh, attainable. And also, like, everything you're saying sounds extremely genuine, which is a great thing to have in the community, for sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys, yeah, like, should I kill reaching you? out. Should I kill you on public live Instagram? You got the screen on my jeans. You got the screen. what? Yeah, I accidentally get paint on clothing, on but. all my clothing. Oh, God. My dad's done that before. Wow. Okay. So well, just coming out of your pay. Huh. Okay. Yeah, right. All right, Steve. Okay, guys. So I, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for, for your kindness and all the effort of reaching out to us and allowing us to express ourselves tonight. So thank you for that. Yeah, for sure, man. We're so happy to have you. Uh, you know, we have a lot of friends out in L.A. We've actually done a pop-up in L.A. before. Um, and, and next time we come out, we definitely plan on coming to see you guys. And we really hope to do an event with you guys and just continue this relationship and kind of just, you know, continue building on the culture. We really love what you have, got, uh, what you guys have going on. Um, so, yeah, just stay in touch, man. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch with you. 100%. We look forward to doing a pop-up with you, and we have that available for you. So let's get it done, guys. Hey, everyone out there, I love you. Say what's up, Sahar. Say goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Ah, he was shooting that job on. We love you. Stay lit. Stay in love. See you, guys. Take care. Take care, bud. Later. All right, guys. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, that was uh, a little bit longer, but we really have been looking for